China. How we love and hate you. Pretty much. It, <laughs> it can't be summed up any better than that. We love China, the scenery and the food. Mm -hmm. We hate China, the people and the pretty culture, much basically. the people and the culture. Yeah. Not not individual, but people as a whole. Yeah. Um, so we have <laughs> officially made it to Kazakhstan. That's where we are right now, as of one day ago. But it's hilarious because we were so, so happy to leave China. Yes, yesterday? Yesterday. Yesterday. We were so happy to leave China yesterday. Like I did a freaking happy dance when we got into Kazakhstan. We made it to Kazakhstan! I was so happy. I was so done with China. But the reason why this is so funny is because we were so incredibly happy and excited to get to China from Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> Two months ago, Vietnam was was so terrible too. <laughs> um, yeah, so hence the love-hate relationship. Uh, we were so excited to be back in China and leave Vietnam, and then we were also so excited to leave China. Yeah, I, I think for us, for four years living in China, it was nice to come back because it it's... Uh, we know what it is. We know what to expect. China, we can speak the language, we can communicate with people. So it, it's convenient. Yeah. Um, but after two months, we remembered all the things we didn't like about China and why we wanted to leave in the first place. Yeah. Well, and I discovered more reasons not to like about China after traveling through Xinjiang. So. That's true. Yeah, up in the north and northwest of China, China really doesn't want foreigners there. Mm -hmm. And we were we were traveling through there, and they are very apparent that foreigners are persona non grata. Do not want you. Do not have any interest in having you there. Let's get you the hell out. Yeah. They um, really need to just close off that area like they have done with Tibet and just say you can only come with the tour guide because, yeah. honestly, it's not even worth it to try and travel there independently. No, it's not very fun. Mm -mm. They're basically just scamming you. Yeah. Yeah, the farther we went along in China, we got more and more of the Chinese culture, the scams, the lies, the cheats. Mm -hmm. And that's that, <laughs> that left the bad taste of China in our mouth. Yeah. But we did have some good tastes of China. Lots and lots of good food on our trip. Yeah, lots of good food. We, we did meet lots of very nice people. We saw tons and tons of beautiful scenery. I mean, I guess I almost want to say like it went from best to worst like as we went through China. Like starting in the south was probably the best. Like Yunnan and southern Sichuan province were amazing. Like we had no trouble finding hotels. Everything was super cheap. I think one night we paid what like 40 RMB for a hotel. Yeah, yeah, about $5 <laughs> was the cheapest we paid for a hotel. Yeah, and that was like our own private room with private bathroom. The hotel even had an elevator. Like, yeah. Yeah, and that we was got crazy. ripped off for more than 10 times that price up in Xinjiang. Yeah, so the situation for foreigners basically just kept getting progressively worse the further north we went. And it's funny because our friend Steve, what did he say? Something to the effect of like, the people get meaner the further north you go in a country, like in general in every country. And at first I was kind of like, yeah, but in China, like we're going to the more rural regions and in rural places, people are generally nicer. But then we went there and they weren't very nice. And then I was well, like, oh, Steve's got well, a point. Well, <laughs> don't listen to her. The people in Xinjiang are very, very nice. The police in Xinjiang are not very nice. Well, the police at the checkpoints were really nice, actually. Just yeah. the local police in town are not very nice. Yeah. But yeah, Justin's right. The locals were very nice to us in in Xinjiang. And they for didn't. The most part. They didn't look Chinese, which was spectacular. Yeah. No. And, yeah. Leaving China, people don't look Chinese. Spectacular. Yeah, it's really <laughs> crazy. They don't even half of them didn't even look Asian. They yeah. looked more Western. Yeah. That was crazy. So I think the thing that we probably love the most about China is the scenery. I mean, China is such a huge country, like pretty similar to the U.S you can find like any type of scenery there. So we went from like lush, when we crossed the border from Vietnam, it was still like very lush, very much like Southeast Asia. We went and saw the Yuanyang rice terraces, which were incredible. And then the scenery kind of changed. It got more like 
desert like. Yeah, it got arid. Yeah, pretty it got arid. Dry, dry and high desert. Mm -hmm. And then, but we went over a bunch of mountain passes, and the mm -hmm. tops of the mountains were gorgeous green. And headed down, and you come back into the desert, you go back up, and you're back in green again, and then you go down and back <laughs> in the desert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then once we got to Chengdu, leaving Chengdu, it was pretty green the whole time. It was very green. Yeah, yeah. and at that point we were climbing up onto the Tibetan Plateau, mm -hmm. and then which was like incredible, like the most gorgeous scenery ever. It was just like huge rocky mountains, green everywhere, snow-capped mountains even in June. Um, and then once we got up onto the plateau, Everything was green because it was just grass. Yeah. Just grassy hills everywhere. Really big, open, green boringness. <laughs> kind of. I mean, the scenery the doesn't change hardly yeah. at all. Mountain grasslands in Tibet and northern uh, Asia are, are not very interesting. <laughs> They're just grass, 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 grass. Big mountains that are just grass. You can't tell how steep or how far away things are because it's, yeah. it's just so open, so big. Yeah. At one point, we kind of started playing a game where Justin would ask me, "How far do you think those mountains are from us?" Yeah, I'm be pretty like, sure I don't know, like 50k, away. 30k. We yeah. would just guess because you literally, it's so open, like you can't tell how far things are away. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah, and then coming down off the plateau we pretty much immediately changed from like this super wet boggy lush grassland to desert but it was raining in the desert yeah that was and it strange. rained the whole time we were in the desert in lonjo and then but then we took the train and skipped a lot of a lot of areas yeah so the our train ride was gorgeous though yeah we, it took us by some huge huge mountains near Qinghai lake and in uh, Qinghai province yeah, it made me sad that we weren't riding that way because it was really beautiful. Yeah, but obviously China doesn't want us there, so we're <laughs> going to skip the shit out of it. Yeah, so basically the main reason that we skipped that part was because we're running out of time on our visa. When we exited China, I think we only had like five days left. So we had 60 yeah. days in China. And including taking the train from Lanzhou to Urumqi, we spent 55 days. And that train ride was... 2,000 kilometers long? Uh, yeah, 2,000 plus kilometers, somewhere between two and 3,000. Yeah, so basically there was zero chance of us making it out of the country on our two wheels. Yeah, we, we could have ridden it all, but we would have had to ride farther and taken less rest days the rest of the time. Yeah, which is just not enjoyable. There's yeah. no point. And we were like over China by that point anyway. Once we got into Northwest China and we started having all those issues with not being able to find hotels, only being able to stay in super expensive hotels, we were just like, all right, it's time to leave. I don't China, feel bad about China, skipping. China hates us. Let's go faster. <laughs> yeah, Let's pretty get out much. Of here. Pretty much. So, yeah, when we arrived in Arumchi, we stayed in this hostel that I thought was kind of expensive because it was a hostel and it cost like 210 RMB per night. It was kind of expensive. Little did we know though, that would be the cheapest place that we stayed the entire time in Xinjiang. It was. Yeah. But two nights we camped, so those were the cheapest <laughs> nights we stayed somewhere. Yeah, but so Xinjiang was just a world of its own. Like I can't even really consider it China, to be honest. Yeah, it's just a police state. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It kind of feels like Nazi Germany. <laughs> it really does. I mean, so there's police checkpoints on the roads yeah. at the entrances to every town. Once you get in the town, there's a police hut, like yeah, mini police station at every intersection pretty much. With every cops. single freaking interse intersection. There's six to eight cops sitting inside. We were mm -hmm. inside one of these huts <laughs> one time and they're all on a video conference together, all looking so freaking bored, doing nothing. They're they're watching the intersection, they're watching the local hotels, make sure none of the scum foreigners come in there. Uh, <laughs> or Muslims. Or Muslims, yeah, that's scum too. You don't want them. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I mean, you are being watched. They don't just, ha like there's cameras everywhere in China, like traffic cameras and stuff. 
But people don't generally watch them. Like, you don't see police sitting around, like, in huts watching them. Like, that just doesn't exist in the rest of China. In Xinjiang, we, I mean, since we actually got to go inside one of those police huts, they are actually watching the live feeds from those cameras. Yeah. And they have a live feed in I probably every single hotel that they're watching. Like, it's up on a big TV screen, and they're just sitting in front watching it. Yeah. It was wild. But the best part about Xinjiang is those yeah. uh, traffic stops we were stopped at. Half of them put us in a van and yeah. made us skip. And so we got out of Xinjiang much faster than we would have. The, the biggest skip we got was like 175, almost 200 kilometers. They mm -hmm. put us in a van from the, what they said was the Chinese Tourism Bureau. Who knows if it was or not, doesn't really yeah. matter. It was a nice free ride down the <laughs> highway. And then we took another, what, 75 kilometers that day, camped under the highway, and a big day the next day, and we were pretty much out of China. Yeah, so their reasons for transporting you are because of, like, well, they told us, like, safety and heat because it was really hot, which is complete BS because we saw actually quite a few other Chinese touring cyclists out in Xinjiang, surprisingly, and they just rode right by. They didn't get stopped at all. Let them rot in the heat. It's great. Yeah, so I don't, we didn't even, I didn't bother asking why. Like, we were so over it at that point. We were just like, whatever, this makes us get out of Xinjiang faster. So, sure, yeah. please give us a ride. <laughs> please give me a ride. I want to get out of here. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the police were just ridiculous out there. I mean, even in the hotels, you have to walk through a scanner and put all of your stuff through a scanner. And there's usually one or two policemen or guards, whatever you want to call them, that their job is just to sit at the reception of the hotel and look through your stuff as you come in. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Everywhere you go, police. Yeah, everywhere you go. And so when we got stopped by the police at one intersection, it was so funny because what did they, they asked us if we liked China or something. Yeah. What did you say? Yeah, I said, no, there's too many policemen. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, I like China, but I don't like here. And Justin's just like, no, there's too many police. But their response was hilarious. Yeah, they said, oh, but, it, but it's for your safety. Yeah. You're not providing me any safety with all of your guys. Yeah, <laughs> it's not for our safety. Maybe you think it's for the Han Chinese safety. I don't know, but you're yeah. stopping us. So how does that make us feel safe? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, um, they don't think. Yeah, but regardless, we got out of China. Police were, uh, yeah, no more police. They're gone. Yeah, no more police, no more checkpoints. We can stay in any hotel we want. No more going up to a hotel and having them say, mm, we wait, don't want your kind. Wait, you're white? No, we don't take you. Yeah. Oh, wait, you, you might not speak Chinese? Meh, meh. Or wait, no, I'm too busy looking at my phone. I'm to not, even deal with Yeah, you. I'm not going to do it. Ah, <sighs> freedom. Yeah. That is what Kazakhstan means to us right now. Freedom. <laughs> and for all you Americans out there, how fitting is it that we cross the border into Kazakhstan on July 4th, Independence Day? I just love that. Yeah. <laughs>